just for one day We can be heroes Just for one day Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Heroes by David Bowie, a fitting tribute for a hero that we lost yesterday. Uh, beautiful song, nice one to play along, suitable for all different levels of guitar players. Um, there's only two real sections uh, to the song, the verses and the choruses, uh, and the intro and the verses is the same uh, chord sequence, which is quite simply two bars of D and two bars of G. So you have a D chord, one, two, three, four, and another bar of D chord, and then we go to G chord for two bars. That's it, it's just moving between those two chords. Now, of course, there's a lot more going on on the original track. It's a lot of layers going on. I'm going to show you one or two of them a little bit later on. But that's the verses. So the verses will be I. Go a little bit too slowly. And I will be king. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you, two, three, four, one. And you will be queen. Okay, now we can talk about you know getting the strumming a little bit more active in a second, but that's the verses and the intro and the breaks are all just that two bars of D, two bars of G. Now the other section that we've got is a 12 bar chord sequence, uh, not a 12 bar blues, just a 12 bar uh, chord sequence. And that would be uh, two bars of C, and then two bars of D. Then one bar of A minor, one bar of E minor, and back to two bars of D. Then to a C chord, to a G chord, and back to two bars of D. Okay, that's the 12 bar sequence that, it's kind of like a pre-chorus and a chorus, I guess. Um, so it's going from the C, two, three, four, we'll drive them a D, two, three, four, one, two, we can A minor them, two, three, four, E minor, just for one D, two, three, four, one, we can be C chord, G, just for one D. Now one thing, um, there's a couple of different approaches to playing the C chord here in this song. Um, quite often guys of kind of David Bowie's vintage uh, play C slightly different to the kind of the regular way, which uh, if you start with a regular C chord just fin using fingers one, two and three, uh, move your third finger over onto the thicker string and put little finger underneath. It's officially it's a C slash G chord, but uh, for a lot of songs, uh, particularly a song like this where you've got electric guitar and acoustic guitar uh, kind of all kind of interweaving with each other, it can sound kind of nice to have a bit of extra bottom end there on the acoustic guitar. So uh, you might want to try uh, using a C chord that way. Uh, and the other uh, type of C chord that works really well in this song is a C add 9 chord. Um, the easiest way to describe it is if you know your big four finger G. So third fret, second fret, open, open, third fret, third fret. If you move fingers one and two just down one string, you get this chord, it's called a C add nine. Very easy to get to from a D chord, so your third finger stays where it is. Very common in kind of 90s heavy metal, hair metal sort of stuff as well. Very useful kind of chord, it can substitute for a C chord quite often. And particularly the end chord for the heroes, just for one day. I think it kind of works really nicely in that particular spot. So uh, regarding the, the rhythm, really uh, there's a couple of different approaches depending on how much energy you want to give it. And there's a few videos of, of David playing it live that you might want to check out. A great one from the Bridge School. However, he's playing in a different key um, than, than the original recorded version. Um, but you can hear the, the, the rhythm. Uh, you really want to have a bit of an accent again. Uh, it's quite a common thing to have an accent on beats two and four. It just kind of keeps the energy going. Um, 
And a nice uh, way of doing it, uh, just a very simple strumming, is just to use regular alternate eighth note strumming. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Uh, and then putting an accent on beats two and four. So just on the D chord there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Down, up, down, up. So just putting that bit of accent on, if I, if I keep it real straight. You can hear it just sounds a bit weird, so you want to have that. Straight away it brings a bit of life into it. You can use that strumming th throughout the whole tune, although you probably want to play it a little quieter in the verses than in the chorus just to give it some sort of movement between the two um, and the alternative which is i think probably the way more uh, that david would have approached it was all down strums the same pattern one and two and three and four and but playing all down strums so one That kind of feel, you know, it gives it a little bit more energy using all down strums to uh, alternating. Um, the recorded version was often a lot slower than uh, than live versions. I think on the live ones, playing all down strokes gives it a little bit more momentum in a faster tempo. But if you're playing it more like the original tempo, um, you, you might want to go for the down up strumming instead of the all downs. So, but it's, it, it would really be a personal choice. Um, and as I mentioned, the original recording is a lot of layers. I don't really hear much of this um, sort of strumming thing. It's more textural. Um, there's a great little guitar riff, though, that I'm going to show you, which is this. Which is going uh, most of the time when there's a D chord to a G chord, the two bars of G, two bars of uh, two bars of D, two bars of G, like you get in the intro and the verses, um, and simply the fifth fret on the fifth string, seventh fret on the sixth string, and then fifth fret on the sixth string with this rhythm: three, four, and one, and two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three. Four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Okay, so first the, this note it's a D. You play that twice, then down to the B, which is the seventh fret on the thicker string, to the A, which is the fifth fret on the uh, thicker string, and then back to the note D. One, two, three, four and one and two and three, four and one and two and three. Four and one and two and three, four and okay, so it's three times through that. Then, okay, so literally, I've just moved my first finger back to the second fret, playing one and two and three and four and just moving my finger up one fret from the second fret, third fret, fourth fret, and then we're back. Changes a little bit through the song, but not a lot. It's kind of like an electric guitar riff, but also uh, caught by the bass a little bit as well. I think live often uh, David just plays the, the regular chords and the bass player plays that kind of a line. Um, the rest of it is, is really these long sustained guitar notes and guitar lines that just kind of move throughout the song. So it's not really a, a specific part that I should show you, but if you're uh, into uh, learning this song or you're playing it in a band or whatever, just have a listen to it and see if you can find some of those little lines to copy. Um, they're very important. The, da, 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 you hear these real little high. It's that note, but it sounds like it's played with a slide guitar and Ebo. Um, you know, it's it's a, it's more textural than a, than a specific part. It would sound weird if you played it by yourself. People wouldn't recognise the song. So, um, I really hope you enjoy playing this song. Do play along with the original recording as well. Um, and uh, R.I.P. David Bowie. Uh, he's definitely a hero to many of us. <laughs>